Hey there, I'm Andre. And in this video, it's kind of a different method for me. I want to share something that happened to me and some guidance to you if you're pursuing the same journey as I did. This journey was the CISSP certification. And what happened to me is late last year, I achieved the certification. On my first try, I managed to get the certification. Now I must say, I did take my time to go through my method of study to be able to get it on the first try after 120 questions. So that was very, uh, very good results for me. I was very surprised. I was not expecting to do it on the first try. Now for this video, what I would do is share well, how I've done and my method to studying for the exam so that you can put this in your goal list for this year. It's a new year and it's something that you should definitely look into uh, if you're particularly dedicated to the cybersecurity domain field in your career. To get started, what I thought about doing is putting down a list of what CISSP is. Essentially, the exam and the requirements for the exam are not entry level for sure. However, there is a path and an alternative way that you can apply for the certification if you don't have all the prereqs. What I mean by that is amongst the prerequisites, you're going to find a list of the professional work or the work experience that you have. If you have five years worth of full time work in the industry, in the cybersecurity industry, so not easy to get, you're going to be able to apply for the member or the full CISSP member, if you will. Of course, there's a leeway there for you. You can apply for four years worth of experience plus one year waiver if you uh, have other certifications such as Microsoft Cybersecurity Architect, which I did, which I do have, and that's what I did myself. But there are other certifications from the field that can grant you that one year waiver from the experience perspective. You also must adhere to the ISC2 code of ethics. If you don't have five years worth of experience, you can get uh, the associate CISSP, which has a more loose uh, set of requirements in terms of the experience. Definitely something that you should keep in mind. So you don't have to have five years worth of experience to go for the certification. But if you want to be uh, the full member, you do require that for those five years worth of experience. Now the exam itself, it is very high level. However, it's deep in some topics and it's theoretical. You don't have to configure anything. You don't have to uh, perform any hands-on commands on any devices, unlike vendor specific cybersecurity, such as CCIE, for example. So it's a very broad set of domains that you must master uh, and they are somewhat deep, but they are never hands-on. The exam itself uh, has been changed over the last few years. Now you must go through at least a hundred questions uh, with about 150 maximum or 175 maximum. And you have a deadline, sort of like three hours maximum for you to achieve the passing rank. So you pr must perform at least hundred questions. If you're good, then if you go beyond the minimum threshold for passing, you're good to go from there. You don't get any more questions. However, if you haven't, uh, achieved the minimal amount of grade when you met that one that 100 questions mark then you keep going until hopefully you do achieve that now talking a little bit about the domains at a very high level there are eight domains security and risk management asset security security architecture and engineering communication and network security identity and access management security assessment and testing security operations and software development security that was up until last year i know that in april so just in a few months from now there are going to be some updates i imagine likely with the addition of more uh, AI artificial intelligence topics to the exam since from my experience from the exam I took it wasn't so heavy on that particular domain although artificial intelligence is covered uh, from a fundamental perspective uh, in some of the domains such as software development security and so, so on and so forth now next up what I want to talk about is my method for studying for CISSP which you can totally copy right and you can use this as your method as well First and foremost, I want to lay down the path work for you in three basic 
functions or three ways that you must look towards to get certified. The first one is the most important. You need to focus. I have been part and I've been studying with a long list of colleagues that have also been on that path for some time. And much like I was, they've been on that path for years, right? I had been studying in and out for years, but only at the end of this year, I managed to put my mind into it and focus. And this is the first tip. You really got to focus. Second tip, which is you got to put in the time to review the content material. And it is a lot of material, right? So be mindful. These eight domains, when you go through the content, it's so much, right? So if you're going to listen to free material online, or if you're going to consume books or cheat sheets, which are summarized versions of the content, you already are going to get a lot of information. But how do you consume the, the material in a way that makes sense for you? Well, I went through the book. I listened to the audio of the book. I went for runs and I was listening to the uh, book on um, Audible, for example. That's my framework for it. So I maximized my effective time throughout my day. That way, I also listened to uh, content at night whenever I had time when I went to bed that I couldn't sleep. Well, there's there's enough time there for a little bit of review on the content that I've already uh, listened to and studied a little bit. So I maximize all these otherwise free time that I would potentially be wasting while listening a podcast or while listening a video about news that are most of the time irrelevant. I maximized that time and I made sure that I was focusing uh, content on those times. Now, what kind of content can you can you leverage? Of course, you can buy the Fisher books. I highly recommend you do that. And you should buy the uh, digital version of the book, right? That This is just practical because you can open it up. You don't have to carry that thick book everywhere. I do own a couple of books from CISSP, but they are unpractical, especially to flick through everything to find stuff. So just buy the book on Kindle or whatever or Kobo or whatever store you prefer. But then there's the next level. Consuming content online, there's a lot of content, a lot of good stuff on YouTube, a lot of good stuff on podcasts even. But I recommend, so Mike Chappell, the writer for one of the official books, does have a course on LinkedIn. It's good, it's very high level, but it's good, right? It's a good start if you're just getting into the mindset of studying. It's good to get yourself across the high level topics. Next up, if you want deeper and are probably getting ready for it, go through Peter Zerger's content on YouTube. He has an eight hour long video on YouTube talking about every single domain. That video is really good. It does skip through some stuff that are important though, right? So be mindful. That is really good. It's a great step towards what you need to study, but it's not everything. So that's where the third layer of study come through. Right? Of course, you have the books, you have the videos, and then you need to go through cheat sheets. Okay, so these are generally PDF created by other, uh, by the community members. So other CSSP certified members, uh, and generally they share it because they are just uh, eager to help the community. You can find a lot of those in LinkedIn and PDF documents. I highly recommend you find some of those. I'm going to reference some in the description of the video. I've used one that is up to date to 2023. It's really good, but I also have older ones, which are also helpful. They just summarize with generally diagrams and some representations, which are uh, up to the point and straightforward. So that's really good. So cheat sheets are a must if you want to uh, go through the content yourself. Still on this second uh, method for, for studying, when you're putting time in reviewing the content material, what you'll have to do is perhaps collaborate. I did it myself. I reached out to my ISC to chapter lead from my from my city, and I I told them, hey, can we start a study group? I will lead some of the sessions, right? I will start talking about some of the sessions and lead on a weekly basis, discussing some of the material, discussing questions, practice questions, go through the practice questions together as a group and discuss some of them. I did that and I did that for more than eight weeks. And that was really helpful to me because as I did so, I created a spreadsheet myself where I documented relevant questions. I also documented and put through uh, relevant links to material that I found. So everything that you will also find in the description of this video. So I highly recommend you go through some of that content as well. 
uh, I will put it on my GitHub for your reference. Everything that I found on this study group will be available on my GitHub on the link in the description. So I highly recommend you leverage that, but you also come up with something you're of yourself, of your own, okay? The last step to my method for study for CSSP is to absolutely go through practice questions. This helps you understand the mindset of management, which the exam expects you to have when you're answering so complex questions. And it's absolutely paramount that you study those practice questions on long periods. What I did is on the week of my exam, and it doesn't work for everybody, but on the week of the exam, I absolutely crammed practice exams and I went through uh, more than 30 hours from Saturday up to the Wednesday when I took the exam, 30 hours of study. That's a long time, right? So I absolutely took on my Saturday, my uh, Sunday and my nights on um, Monday and Tuesday because I really wanted to go through every single question that I could from the official practice question. They really help you. So there are a lot of official practice tests from um, the IC square book, but also from only one book as well. They are really good. However, the one comment I will make is these practice questions, they're generally more straightforward than the ones you're going to uh, see in the exam. So be prepared for very lengthy uh, questions throughout the exam. I'm not a native English speaker. So when I'm reading through and when I'm communicating English at lengthy times, I get exhausted. So if you're doing the same and if you're not English native speaking and if you're taking the exam in English, you're going to really feel exhausted after one hour an hour and a half through the exam i was already really exhausted trying to really understand the questions and the complexity of the questions that were being posed to me so this is something i felt and something i highly recommend you do is prepare your mind to complex themes on the exam and for breakfast questions of course like i said you can use all these multiple sources and use as many official ones as you can they are really good to get you ready because your method to leveraging the practice exam is not just to um, answer these practice questions, but answer, read through the explanation of the answer, why the answer is what it is. And if you get it wrong and it's unclear to you, there is a big red flag for you to just go and study, right? So that's when you, and what I did was I was reviewing um, every question from the practice exam as I got them wrong or as I got them, some right, but still had questions. I was taking notes as I went through the press ex exams on my tablet as I had questions on them and I was responding to them. I was reviewing the answers. What I did was I went through my cheat sheets PDF. I reviewed the material. If they were still unclear, I went to Google and did my uh, other research as well. So that was my method to study absolutely everything from the exam. And I must say, I was averaging 80% on the official practice exam app for my my phone and you can totally subscribe to that it's a little expensive it's 20 dollars a month but if you use it on your last few weeks so you only pay for a month you and you you're averaging those eight percent uh worth of um, every domain so i went through practice exams for every single domain throughout those those days that i mentioned well, throughout this 30 hours on the five days before the exam of course i was really exhausted because i was reading um, exams every single hour i was averaging 80 percent on every single domain and that really set me well for the exam so i really recommend you go through the practice exams you get those 80 percent and above um, and i believe if you're doing that right and if you have read through the official material you understand every single core tenant idea of the content you probably have the manager mindset already because the practice exam gets you there of course by that stage it means you're already focused on the study and it probably means you're already ready to take on the exam so at that point i would say just book the exam and good luck so with this i hope this content is useful for you i know i wish i would have heard something so straightforward to uh, studying for a cssp but i hope this has been helpful in everything that you need in order to pass as well and if you do pass after some of these tips Make sure you uh, leave in the comments, let me know, but also leave a like, subscribe, because it's always helpful to know that there are people who find this sort of content useful. Otherwise, uh, enjoy your time and enjoy this year for you. Hopefully you achieve a lot of personal goals and of course, cybersecurity goals and always keep safe and see you there.